<sighs> it's a brand new day. This is why I love life out here. I can smell the renewal, the rebirth. The rains have come and soaked the prairie. The drought is beyond us. There is no more dust and dying. It's time for nature to bring it back to life. You know, I think I'm gonna go out today, maybe just sit in a daisy patch and like, oh, morning greenhorn. You're back again. You know, I feel like I'm not too old to learn my lessons. And uh, every time I see you, I dislike you less. First time we met, you were feeding your cat the worst kind of thing that you could feed a cat. To say that you love your cat and then feed them kibble. And then the next time we met, you started to see the light. Well, today, Greenhorn, I want you to sit down again and don't you move, because I will teach you one last lesson. What is your cat, Greenhorn? What? What was that? Yeah, that's what I thought you said. A carnivore. And what do carnivores eat? That's right. They eat meat. And your cat should be eating meat. So today, we are going to be talking about what your cat needs to eat as nature meant for your cat to eat. And that is, well, meat. So sit down, take a load off. Today, is your final lesson. What's up, little cow pokes? It is your cat daddy-o, here to tell you the truth. Okay, I'm done. You know, it works while I got the hat on and I'm chewing on some whatever that was, <laughs> but right now I'm just a guy in a t-shirt who happens to be named Jackson Galaxy and who happens to be here for you guys today to talk about part three of our series on cat food. And I just gotta say ahead of time, the response from you all has been amazing. I, I never really thought that, that in general, uh, cat folks would be this interested in nutrition. And actually, I just did a poll on YouTube the other day asking you what kind of videos you wanted to see in the future, and cat nutrition ran away with it. So today, uh, we're gonna talk about what is that third component. We've been talking about the food, the bad, and the ugly. Well, this is the furthest from bad and ugly as we can possibly get. This is the, the ultimate diet for your cat. Let's just rewind for a second. And, and, and let's get back to the basics of what cats need to eat. Industrially, we have gotten so far away from what cats are supposed to eat, it's just amazing that they're functioning at all with the amount of carbohydrates that are in these dry foods. There's a ton of other things. I am not gonna recap the whole dry food story like I did last time. Just check out the video above if you need to catch up. Now, we moved on in the second part to what's better than dry food. Okay, what's better for the obligate carnivore? Well, more meat, and more meat that hasn't been so completely obliterated and denatured that, uh, that it barely resembles meat anymore. Well, that's, that's wet food. Wet food is number two. Wet food is better than dry food. Now, what comes next? Oh, the suspense. Now, we are at the pinnacle of what is appropriate for our cats to eat, what is truly bio-appropriate, and that is, drum roll please. <laughs> Terrible drum roll. How about just like a rim shot? Okay, that's great. That is raw. A raw diet is the best thing that your cats can eat. Before I say any of this about raw food, I want you guys to know something. You need to go and have your cat uh, evaluated beforehand, have their levels checked. Uh, make sure that your cat is okay to be switched from one food to another. We'll talk about this in, in videos to come, but I would be remiss if I just said, hey, switch your cats to a raw diet and everything's gonna be good. For instance, we've seen in diabetic cats, even though a raw diet helps regulate their blood glucose levels like nothing else, if they're already on insulin, it could cause a little bit of wonky spikes and we just don't want that. So again, whether your cat is immunocompromised, uh, whether they have an illness that, that needs to be uh, talked about with your vet before you switch to any diet, do that talking, but do your research as well. So why is a raw diet better than any other diet? Let's just start with the very obvious. As an obligate carnivore, cats eat meat. Cats should eat the whole prey animal. So that means muscle, tissue, fat, organ, bone, all of that. Our cats are not far removed at all 
from the desert cats of 10,000 plus years ago. They're really not. So we know it's better than dry food, right? Because as long as something looks like a little gumball and crunches when your cat eats it, you should pretty much know that it's been through too much to be good for your cat. And the, not the least of which is the heat that goes into making uh, that product. So much heat. By the time it comes out of extrusion and, and in, we're in little shapes like a little cake cutter and it's been cooked two, three separate times, then we gotta spray some meat flavor on it because at this point, it doesn't smell like anything anymore. That should tell you all you need to know. Okay, so moving forward, why is it better than wet food? Well, now we still have a bit of the same problem. Wet food, while tons better than dry, if for no other reason than the hydration that your cat gets from it, just, just that alone. But it still is heat processed and we're still uh, denaturing the meat. The other thing that, that makes wet not so good is how confusing it is to read labels. There is such confusion. I mean, to know that like you can actually call something grain free, but yeah, it's kind of not because you can just replace a little bit of this and a little bit of that. And the carb content and the fat and the fiber content, well, if you do this kind of mathematics, that's not available on that damn label, man. It's not there. So you either have to be a math major, which uh-uh, uh-uh, not this guy. I, I will look at it and go, hmm, I don't know. Well, it's better than dry, you know? And that brings us to the raw diet. Not only is this what cats are meant to eat in the first place, but you are now in control. All of the variables, all of the mystery meat, all of the byproducts that you might see and you might not, and what exactly is a byproduct, and man, is there a cancerous tumor in, in my cat's food? The fact is, you are now in control. You can know precisely what meat ingredients and what supplements, which are very important, I'll get to that in a second, are in your cat's food. So that to me trumps everything else, right? Those two major points. This is what cats are meant to eat and you as the parent have absolute control over what your cat is eating and what they're putting into their system. And just to run down some more reasons why a raw diet is better than any other diet for your cats. Number one, it improves their digestion because again, cats' uh, digestive tract is built to process the impurities out of raw meat. That's, again, why they have thrived for so many thousands of years, right? It is a very short, straight, and, and acidic digestive tract. So within 12 hours of eating, in it goes, we bounce out all the things that are bad, we go, up. Oh, uh, we can use this right here. Oop, nope, we don't want you here. Boink, 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 and out. Number two, and this is part of number one, is that their poops are better. There's less of it. And anybody who has fed their cat a raw diet knows this to be true. Once we've transitioned over to the raw diet, and of course, there's a little bit of bumps along the way because then you'll notice that there's less poop. Why is that? That's because there's less stuff in the food they're eating that is not meant for a cat. A third benefit of raw food is a better coat. And really, I, I mean, I can vouch for this as can many, many, if not most folks uh, who have transitioned their cats to a raw diet. You notice that your cat's coat is better, less dandruff, uh, less dry spots. The fourth reason why raw is better is because it'll help your cat lose weight. And I have, I, again, I can say this from, from 30 years of watching cats on raw diets. They just start to trim down. They don't lose their muscle mass, they just lose the flab. Now here's one that's gonna surprise you, a lot of you guys, because I think if there was one comment that was just pervasive from the first video about dry food is, but I was told that dry food will help clean my cat's teeth which hopefully you realize by now is ridiculous. Not true. So what does help uh, your cat's teeth in nature? It's what you would see in the raw diet. It's chewing on things like bones and, and cartilage and, and connective tissue. That's what help cleans your cat's teeth. And that's what you get out of a raw diet as well. And also, just as a snacky thing, uh, you can get raw bones for cats that they can chew on and that's the closest they're gonna get to brushing their teeth and it's a great calcium source and the bone that is included ground up in a raw diet, that's the calcium source they need without adding calcium. See, and that's where we're getting to with a lot of this is that we don't have to add in a ton of things. We still have to add in some things and I'll go into that in a second, but that's, that's the truth, Ruth. Another impact, again, that I've seen I can vouch for, it, it just really plays into what I call hunt, catch, kill, eat. 
is that when they eat raw at the end of a play cycle and, and, and from the time they wake up, they have this you know up cycle of energy, they eat, down they go, but their energy overall is, you can't even compare it. Naturally, a cat's energy is so much more predictable and so much more up than it would be otherwise. And again, it all comes down to your cat is eating what they have evolved to eat with very little interference from us over time. That's it, that's it. So that's a whole bunch of reasons. I'm sure I could come up with more, but those are, are the, uh, that's the lowest hanging fruit, as it were. No fruit, don't feed your cat fruit. So now let's get into a little bit of uh, what you guys, I can hear you, by the way. I could, I could read it through the camera. This is one of the gifts. <laughs> but but uh, it, it has been asked a lot um, how difficult it is to feed a raw diet. So commercially bought uh, raw foods are now something that is real and wonderful for anybody who was dealing with raw food back in the day. It's a lot less messy. Um, it, it, they come as complete, which means that all of the supplements that you would need in the food are there. And the balance in terms of protein versus you know a small amount of carb, usually about 5%, is there. You get to pick your protein source. It, it's just really kind of idiot proof. Coming from an idiot, I'm just telling you, it, it's, it's very simple. Full control of what your cat is putting in his or her body comes down to a homemade diet. And homemade diets are also uh, much easier than they used to be, much more foolproof. And I will link uh, in the description to some of the sources that I have that really just, they just do an amazing job um, at, at, at getting this down to a place where if you wanna do it, it's a lot easier than it used to be. Now, I know uh, what a lot of you guys are thinking, especially in today's climate, which is the cost of both the store-bought and the homemade food. If you start looking at the homemade diet, um, it's probably not as expensive as you think it is. And if you're okay doing that, then you, you make big batches of it. And I would venture to say that in the long run, it might be close to a wash if you're talking about premium wet and a homemade diet. Uh, that would take a little bit of experimentation, but but I get it. I get it. That That's a a, a very valid concern for, for any of you guys. So let's talk about supplements that need to be added into raw food. Th there's a difference between your cat catching a mouse, let's say, and eating it, and having something that's prepared. So a lot of the nutrients are lost through things like blood supply. No matter what you do, the difference between eating an animal right when you catch them and not is, you know, you do lose some of that blood. The second thing is, and I'm sorry you guys to get graphic, and if this is making you squeamish, just skip ahead for a little bit, but there are nutrients that are lost that exist only in the head of the animal, specifically in the brains and the eyes, and a lot of times the heads aren't used in the mix for the food. So with that said, supplements are not an option. You do need to supplement your cat's diets, specifically with things like taurine, vitamin B, vitamin E, and essential fatty acids. These are things that, that need to be added into your cat's raw diet. You don't want to just go to the supermarket, buy some raw chicken that's in you know, the grocery case, bring it home and feed it to your cats. That won't work. They still need that supplemental help, so just remember that. So let's talk about another concern that seems to be pretty pervasive about uh, feeding your cats a raw diet, and that is bacterial contamination. The thing I hear the most about is salmonella. It's not something that a cat is very subject to. Think about it, you guys. Th that's what cats have been eating for thousands of years, are raw animals. They don't walk around carrying a little cat, cat hibachi with them, put it down and barbecue up a, a, a meal. They eat them. Not saying that bacterial contamination is not an issue in meat, but there is evidence that shows that the, the bacterial contamination in cooked meat is higher than the raw meat. Think about all of the recalls that have happened in commercial dry and wet food over the years. A lot, you guys, salmonella contamination in those foods. Not, you're not seeing them as much in raw foods. It's time to put a lot of these things to rest. And like I said, I'm not making this up. I am linking to things in the description that will point by point show you how th these, these fables uh, about contamination um, and things like salmonella are just not part of the picture. And if they are, it's a tiny, tiny, minuscule part. And that's the risk that you take feeding your cat anything.
And of course, I would be remiss if I didn't show you some of the products that I stand behind that I think will help your cats digestively, both from a physical and energetic standpoint. So from the physical side, we have this right here. This is my Jackson Galaxy Probiotics and uh, Enzymes for Cats. I, I really think it's a great product. I use it uh, for all my cats, and it does really make a difference uh, in terms of their gut health. Second thing here is for the energetic body, this is Jackson Galaxy Solutions, and the remedy to use is called Happy Tummy. Again, this is not to make your cats physical body healthy, uh, but in conjunction with physical elements, it is. What it's there for is energetically to break sort of energetic blocks that, that will cause dis-ease in, in your cat's gut. Uh, the combination of the two of these has helped just dramatically with cats that I've worked with. All right, so just know that I am talking about raw food and a raw food diet on a very top level basis. I can't even begin to start digging into all of the little things uh, that make raw food better than other foods, that addresses all the concerns that you might have, but that's why I'm giving you resources because, like I said, there are people who have spent their entire medical careers dealing with, with nutrition in cats, and these are people that I trust completely, and uh, I'd ask you to go and take a look at those things, and if you don't believe them, keep Keep looking, keep looking. But one word of caution, just make sure that these are unbiased facts that have nothing to do with other interests and then you'll get the facts. And if you find anything that I have missed or that my sources have missed, please bring it up. I, I, the dialogue around this is, is too important to pass up because as you can tell, three installments and more to come about cat nutrition, you, you can see how important it is to me and it should be important to you as well. Look, before I wrap up this three-parter here, the food and the bad and the ugly, I would be remiss not to thank just a few of the veterinary sources and sources in, in cat nutrition that I've trusted so much over the years. Um, and, and I know I'm gonna be leaving some folks out, so I am very sorry about that in advance. Uh, but first of all, I would like to thank my old business partner, cat veterinarian, holistic guru, Dr. Jean Hovey. Uh, check out littlebigcat.com, again, link below. Uh, she is someone who you should know. Also, Margaret Gates, uh, who has devoted her life to feline nutrition and her website down there, felinenutrition.org, feline-nutrition.org. Just a treasure trove of info and breaking it down into really, I was about to say, <laughs> about to say bite-sized pieces and that's just terrible of me. But anyway, Margaret, thank you for all you do. Um, I also want to thank uh, Dr. Elizabeth Hodgkins, Dr. Guillermo Diaz, Dr. Karen Becker, Dr. Uh, Lisa Pearson, um, and Dr. Andrea Tassi, uh, Dr. Will Winter. These are people who have really put their professional life on the line in order to advocate for, for your cats. And like I said, I know I missed somebody. Also, I'd love to thank uh, Ingrid King from Conscious Cat. Ingrid has spent her life um, digging into all the things that make your cat tick as well and she's introduced me to some of these great people as well. And I'd also love to thank Tracy Dion, her wonderful website, catcentric.org. Again, great information, rounds out everything that you need to know about raw food. I know I'm missing people right now and if I do remember, they'll be in the description as well. But thank you to, to all of these professionals who have spent so much time advocating for your cat and what should go into their body. And, uh, and that's it, you guys. Three parts, the food, the bad, the ugly, dry food, wet food, raw food. And there will be more to come. In the weeks to follow, we will talk about how to transition your cat from one diet to another. We will uh, check out some warning signals about uh, what you should be looking for when you read the labels in, in foods and anything else you want want to hear, that's what the comments are for, send me some, okay? And now, uh, you'll not find out about this video nor any other video unless you subscribe. Hit that little bell when you do subscribe, all you new subscribers, so that you get alerted when the videos come. Share this, please, with everybody that you know that has cats because we should all know this information and then from having the information, make the best judgment call for our cats, right? Absolutely, Jackson. Oh, nice call, Jackson. Okay, bye, Jackson. Bye, everybody. Talk to you later. I'll lay it all love and I'll mojo to you. Mwah. Meow.